Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing a follow-up to a video that I did a couple weeks ago on the Microsoft Year 2000 Resource CD. And uh, if you haven't seen that video and you kind of want to hear more about what this CD really was, uh, you can go check out this video up in the cards um, where we actually ran it under Windows 98, which is an operating system that it was, you know, intended to run on. But today, as suggested by some of you guys, we're going to actually be trying to run this uh, year 2000 resource CD and all of the tools that it comes with here on Windows 10. So what this CD basically was, um, it was released in the uh, late 1990s by Microsoft as a tool to basically see if your computer was Y2K compliant. Now, as I mentioned in that previous video, there were a few issues um, when Y2K actually happened, but the worldwide uh, initiative that Microsoft played a huge part in was definitely helpful at kind of mitigating a lot of the uh, problems that did happen. Um, so with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into this and see if, if we can actually run these programs on uh, Windows 10 here. So we're going to open up this PC, and you see this is the same uh, virtual machine that we ran uh, WinArrow Tweaker on. Uh, so we do still have the gigantic uh, title bars and the window buttons up here. Um, just if you guys are like kind of wondering why that is. It's also why we don't see the uh, C drive in here either. And we have right here the uh, CD put into this uh, virtual machines driver. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. I can show you all of the files. Again, we have the uh, gigantic scroll bar on the side here. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and run autorun.exe and that will bring up this same interface. And it looks like that... Yeah, it looks like right off the bat that it is going to open up uh, no problem. So that is definitely pretty awesome. Now for the uh, year 2000 product analyzer, which is going to be kind of the main thing that we're going to take a look at, we do have a, a good selection of different programs on this computer. Office 95 is the only period specific software that we have. The rest of the software is actually newer software. We have uh, AOMI Partition Assistant. We have EasyUS Partition Master. We also have WinArrow Tweaker. And we also have 3DNA on this VM as well. So we have a decent amount of, uh, you know, applications that we're going to see if this program can even recognize these applications and uh, if it says that they are Y2K compliant or not. So we're going to start off with uh, please read this first kind of just like we did in that previous video and we're going to see if we can install IE 5.0 because there is a bundled installer on here um, and uh, it actually looks like that wizard is opening up. So let's see if we can go through here and install IE 5.0. Now we, we were able to install Internet Explorer 1.5 on Windows 10. That was in a, a video I did a, a couple months ago. So Internet Explorer 5 might actually work. So let's just try to do uh, customize your browser. Let's see what customization options that it gives us. We're going to go with the full install. And uh, apparently we can't change the install directory, which is which might actually be a problem. But we'll, we'll just see if it gives us any issues because under advanced, there weren't any options to change the folder. So actually, this looks to be like an update wizard. So it might think there's a previous version installed. So this might actually not work. Um, you know, if it detects there's a newer version of Internet Explorer installed. Uh, okay, so it says restart computer it didn't really look like it did a whole lot. Uh, I wonder if it actually yeah, it's still, uh, you know, the same version is still here. So let's see if we can restart the system and uh, see if, you know, miraculously Internet Explorer 5 will now be installed on boot up. So uh, let's let's just see what happens. Oh, first we got to update, though. It, it wouldn't be a Windows 10 video without Windows wanting to update. So I'll go ahead and let Windows do that. And uh, we'll be back um, once the machine is restarted. All right, so we're back. And uh, the installer did not actually um, put Internet Explorer 5 on the system. This is still version 11, as you can see. Um, in you know this little properties window right here. I actually tried to go back and run the installer again And let me just kind of show you what uh, I did differently because it just did the the exact same thing uh, What I did though is instead of going through the uh, custom uh, Setup where when it shows up here, which it should at any moment instead of going to customize your browser I just said install now and it came up with this message saying that the most recent versions of all items are already installed it is recommended that you exit setup without reinstalling. I even tried to hit reinstall and uh, hit OK, and it just asked me to restart once again, and uh, it just didn't actually install anything. So, unfortunately, that is not going to work. Um, the only other thing in here is the NT4 README file, which apparently cannot be found, so that's interesting. That did not happen uh, in the you know previous video running this under Windows 98. Um, as for the website content, there's really no reason why this wouldn't work, and you can see that it you know totally shows up 
perfectly fine just like it did in the uh, previous video under Windows 98. Um, obviously this is just a HTML document so like I said there's there's really no reason why we'd have any trouble opening it up on a uh, newer browser here. Um, how to subscribe to the year 2000 resource CD? It's not able to find that file either. Yeah it is still in here actually. Yeah th this is it right here. How to subscribe to the year 2000 resource CD. So for some reason it's not actually able to open it up and this right here is the readme file for uh, yeah NT 4.0 uh, the you know service pack 5 update that uh, we tried to access from in here so that's interesting it's not able to actually find these files even though they are in the exact same place you know that they were before it's just not able to open them up for for whatever reason obviously the main thing that we want to take a look at is the product analyzer as I mentioned before so we're going to install that and uh, first of all see if it actually installs um, we have not applied any compatibility layers or anything like that. So this is just running it right out of the box, basically. And we're going to install it to CY2K scan. We're going to create the folder. And it's been successfully installed. So now let's go into uh, our C drive, which again, we have the drive hidden, so we have to access it manually from the uh, address bar. Go into Y2K scan, and we're going to run Y2K scan.exe without uh, any compatibility layers. And it looks like that's actually going to work, although we'll see if we can actually go through this whole process right here. So we're just going to hit next here. We're going to go with uh, custom. We'll only have it scan the C drive because that's the only drive that has any of these uh, you know programs installed. Uh, this clone drive either. That's just like a blank drive. It's nothing actually on it. So we'll hit next. Uh, we're not going to bother updating the database because, well, it can't because this is not uh, hosted on Microsoft's website anymore. So we're going to hit next. We're going to use the database that's already in the Y2K scan directory. Uh, for data source, we'll just go with all. We'll hit next. We want it to generate an HTML document and uh, we'll save it in the same folder. So we'll hit next and we'll hit next once again. And I was actually going to test and, and see if this stuff is Y2K compliant, which it obviously is, but it's gonna be interesting if it finds some of these programs as not Y2K compliant. That's gonna be interesting. And we're gonna be seeing if uh, any of these programs, I'm sure none of them, I'm, I'm sure what we're gonna get is most of them are, are just going to say that uh, it's unsure, kind of that like that unsure option where it wasn't able to tell if it was Y2K compliant or not because it's not in the database. Um, but it is going through and the scan is actually taking a little bit longer than it did on the Windows 98 system. So uh, yeah, that is a good sign because it's obviously got more to scan here. So we'll just let it do that. And there we go. So it has found 14 programs. It has found 14 programs match the product compliance database. So that's a pretty good sign there. Let's just hit view report now and see uh, what happens? So it opens up with Edge. All right, so here is the uh, report right here. Again, this is the Microsoft Year 2000 Product Analyzer Report, Year 2000 Readiness Disclosure. So interestingly enough, it um, actually thinks that we're running Windows 2000. The interesting thing about that is that Windows 2000 didn't even exist when this tool was made. You can see that the system inventory was created on June 5th, 1999. Windows 2000 was not released to manufacturing until December of 1999, and it wasn't officially released to the public until February of 2000, so that is very interesting. And for the OS version, it thinks that we're running, uh, you know, this is obviously going off the NT version string, but it thinks that it's like running 6.02.9200 of, uh, you know, Windows NT. And this is obviously not the case because... Uh, Windows 10's NT version is 10.0. Microsoft basically jumped from 6.3, which was Windows 8.1's uh, NT version, and jumped to 10.0 just to kind of make things a little bit more seamless when you're talking about the actual you know, public OS name and the NT version, just so they would be exactly the same thing. They're both version 10.0. And the interesting thing here is this is actually Windows 8's um, both, well, it's almost Windows 8's NT version. For some reason, it's saying 6.02. Windows 8's NT version is 6.2. But the build, the .9200, that is Windows 8's, uh, you know, the, the first publicly available build of Windows 8 that was released uh, was build 9200. So for some reason, this thinks that we're running running uh, Windows NT 6.02, which is not Windows 8's like NT version. Windows 8's again is 6.2. 6.0 is Windows Vista. So, uh, but then dot 9200 is Windows 8's uh, like the actual build of Windows 8 that was released on the launch date. So yeah, very interesting stuff going on here. Again, I didn't run this tool with any compatibility layers applied. So this was just running it as you would any other program. Uh, these are the results that it returned.
And uh, so these are uh, the system and slash applications that it was able to find. So it's found IE 1.0, which it actually does not know if it is compliant or not. Now, this was obviously something that I totally forgot that we had installed on, on this VM. But yeah, this was the same VM that we tried to install IE 1.0 in. Um, so it do, it's not sure if that is compliant. Access 97, Excel, or not 97, 95. Access 95 and Excel 95, um, they, it says that they are compliant, but they need a uh, prerequisite, which is that patch that is on this CD. Um, same for pretty much all of the other Office 95 programs. And uh, Schedule Plus down here is the only other one that, well, this one actually says compliant with minor issues. Uh, Schedule Plus is another uh, Office 95 uh, bundled program. Now, everything else here says compliance unknown, but it was able to find uh, the actual operating system version, which it just thinks is Windows NT 10.0. Uh, it's found two separate versions of that, uh, interestingly enough. So we've got uh, 18.362.418 and .30. Uh, obviously, it says compliance unknown. Um, it's found four versions of Internet Explorer 11. Actually, these are all the exact same version, 18362.1. Um, so it's found that four times for some reason. Obviously, it's not sure if those are compliant. And if we scroll down here, it actually shows where it was able to, uh, you know, locate all of these files. So it found the uh, Internet Explorer 1.0, uh, which is located on my desktop in this folder right here. Uh, for somehow it's found whatever Internet Explorer plus 1.0 is. Um, obviously, Access uh, 95, all the Office 95 stuff shows it as compliant, but it needs to get that patch that the uh, tool has for us. And for Internet Explorer 11, it's found it in four different locations on the system, so that's why it's showing up four times. Uh, this is more Office 95 stuff. And for Windows NT, it's pulling that, these two separate versions, from uh, this location on the system, and it obviously does not know if it is uh, compliant or not, so it just links you to the generic uh, microsoft.com slash year2000 website. Uh, so that is cool that this tool actually ran, but obviously it's not able to find all these programs that are not in its database. It's not able to find if they are compliant or not. So uh, it's still interesting. We're going to just uh, close out of that. So that is the product analyzer. Um, for the product updates, we should still be able to install. Obviously, we don't have Windows 95, so this probably is not going to work. Yeah, because it's not designed for your type of uh, operating system. Windows 98 is going to do the exact same thing. Uh, NT 4.0 SP5 uh, looks like it's actually extracting, so we'll let that uh, go in the background. But uh, we obviously want to see if we can install the Office 95 updates, uh, which I don't think we'll have any problem doing because we do have Office 95 on the system, so it should be able to find those programs. And here, there you go. There's a whole list of them. We'll hit update and uh, let it update and uh, make it Y2K compliant. So there we go. It has, uh, you know, update completed successfully. So check that out. But yeah, everything else in here, you obviously are going to need to have the, the, the program installed. So if we try to launch the Internet Explorer 4.01, uh, it's, yeah, it's just going to say it is newer than the version you've chosen to install. Um, I wonder if we can still install this, though. Let's get standard installation, US. Uh, let's Internet Explorer 4. Yes, we want to create it. Unable to download. Oh, yeah, because the, the internet is likely busy. Yeah, no, it's just because uh, the server's down. Uh, so that actually has to download stuff from the server, which is interesting. Uh, and yeah, so same thing with Windows NT. It's going to say that the version you have installed is more current, and that's obviously what I expected. Um, and then go to other year 2000 related items is just going to be a link to the website, install the Excel date migration wizard and the year 2000 product workbook, uh, which, which does the exact same thing that it did in the previous video, which it just uh, does not open up. This is what I was talking about with these buttons up here. You can see that when I try to click here, it doesn't actually close the program. You have to actually click over here on this button. And it looks like it actually does that for all of these buttons here. So I guess it just doesn't like, you know, recognize that these buttons are so large. So yeah, there you have it, guys. That is uh, running a Y2K scan on Windows 10 here in the year 2020. Before we head out of here, though, I want to give a huge thank you to PDF Element for sponsoring today's episode. Have you ever been in a situation where you noticed a typo or maybe even a formatting error in a PDF document, but no longer had access to the editable version of the file? It's scenarios like this where PDF elements can really come in handy. With it, you can highlight or underline text to make it stand out to the reader, and easily edit existing text to fix typos. 
It also supports things like e-signing, allowing you to securely affix your signature to documents. There's also a plethora of document templates available, and the Pro version enables you to perform optical character recognition on scanned documents, enabling you to use the built-in search function and edit text on these files. Today, they're promoting the Mac version of the program, which can be downloaded on the Mac App Store or directly from the website linked below. But they've also got a version available for Windows and a mobile app for both Android and iOS. So if you're interested, check out the link in this video's description for more information. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and uh, turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already um, to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And uh, as always, if you guys have any comments uh, or any video suggestions for me, be sure to leave those down below as I always enjoy reading uh, what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.